Hello everyone, I'm Wooden Railway Edward. I imagine many people watching this are new to the channel, so I'll preface this by saying that I'm not knowledgeable when it comes to model trains. I love anything to do with trains, don't get me wrong, but I focus on the Thomas Wooden Railway merchandise line foremost. However, it all changed about two weeks ago, when I had one of the coolest days of my life. As you can see in front of you, here are two O-scale freight cars, one is a boxcar and the other a gondola car. These were not my only discoveries, as I found many more pre-war Lionel products during my hunt. I thought I'd share pictures, videos, and some narration of how I found these rare Lionel models. The Lionel Corporation was founded in 1900 in New York State. It's most well known for producing electric train sets and accessories for a miniature railroad. Although the original Lionel Corporation was sold in 1969 and was completely dissolved in 1993, the Lionel brand is still around today and they release a healthy range of new model trains every year. The Lionel models shown in this video are believed to be from the 1930s, making them pre-war. They were in the possession of my grandfather's good friend and neighbor, who sadly passed away last July. It's lucky that he was able to rescue these boxes from the house cleaning as they were buried in a cluttered garage. They were stored in his basement until we could properly look at the contents. The friend had carried these with him for over 80 years, and I was amazed that they had not fallen to dirt by this point. Here are the boxes after being carried out of the basement. Two of the boxes were completely filled with tracks, while others held various other pieces. The first thing that piqued my interest was this vintage catalog. The subtitle Golden Anniversary Year suggests that it is from 1950. This makes sense, as several of the custom rolling stock items are also marked as from that decade. I took several videos of the catalog, and I'll be interested to study the small details later. If I was a kid in the 50s, I would be overjoyed with the colorful advertisements. This looks like fun. This dog statue was also salvaged, and believe it or not, weighs 30 pounds. He may look cute, but that pooch almost gave me a hernia trying to carry him. Anyway, this fully metal tunnel was quite interesting. The keystone on the arch of the tunnel has the all-important Lionel marking, and the condition of this is fairly good. I was surprised by the detailing on the sides, and how realistic the little houses and bridges look. From various websites, this was made from the late 20s to early 30s. It's also hand-painted, which would be unheard of in today's toy market. Next was a peculiar 040 locomotive, which was very dusty. I took videos and pictures both inside and outside, and here you can see the wheels are labeled Lionel Corporation New York. This leads me to believe that it is not a reproduction model from the 80s, and is the real thing, dating from around 1927 to 1932, or it could be a little bit later. This particular loco was sold with various different sets, so I'm not sure if mine was paired with the rolling stock or coaches we'll look at soon. It is missing a light bulb on one end, but it still has its cow catcher and couplings. The wiring is still connected to the chassis, but I doubt that it runs. This olive green cattle car was also pulled out next, and is in very good condition. It has an orange roof, along with fitted handbrakes and doors that slide open. What a cool feature. I was so happy when I found this, it was really a surprise. You know, nowadays they have features like this, but back then they didn't have the huge Asian factories that mass produced this stuff. This was all done by hand, uh, with the help of simple machines, so it was really interesting to find this. This was produced over a larger amount of time. I have to say, they were great together. Here's a green gondola car, labeled 512. 
I just now realized this, but with having numbers in succession, 512 and 513, this car and the cattle car must have been produced or sold together. It still has the sticker underneath, proving its authenticity. Most of the paint is still intact on this one, and the wheels are pretty clean. Speaking of paint, what a vibrant coat this caboose has. It reminds me of Christmas, with a green body and a red roof. I could definitely see this going on a little circle layout underneath the Christmas tree. The windows are picked out in orange, which complement the other colors. It's numbered 517, and also has the Lionel sticker on the bottom, although in much better condition compared to the other ones. On each end is a nicely detailed metal railing, with a ladder modeled too. There was a loose railing piece, but it's not quite the same style as these on the caboose, so I don't know what it's from. This is the least expensive of the models, valued at about $30 on eBay and other secondhand auction sites. My lack of model railway experience really starts to show here, as I couldn't figure out how to couple these models together. So they're just in a line, but they still look splendid. Nonetheless, let's move on from rolling stock and take a look at these three coaches. They have lost some paint and have some damaged curtain detailing. There are two standard coaches and one brake coach. The coach I studied the most was number 341, and I assume the other coaches have similar numbering. Written on the side is Observation, and the aforementioned curtain detailing is done in a pattern of blue marble. The inside of the coaches are hollow, while the last coach has a small wedge for the conductor to stand on. I'm pretty sure they made figures back then, so that's plausible. Once again, there are stickers and these cylinder things, I'm not really sure what they are. The most impressive detail with these doors, which open and close. The stairs below them are also nice. Just a quick note from Editing Re, the loose metal railing goes to the end of the brake coach, I didn't figure that out until now. Even though they are American coaches, I'm sure Gordon would be proud to pull these. There's also this locomotive tender, which unfortunately is without an engine. A steam engine would have been a great addition to these finds, but I guess sometimes you don't get everything you ask for. It retains most of the black coat of paint, with gouges in the paint here and there. It's labeled the Lionel Railway Lines on the side, and has riveting detailing on the sides, top, and back. The coal bunker is spacious, and interestingly, the metal sheet of coal can be lifted up to have access to the interior of the tender. There's some detailing to suggest a water cap, and also a ladder. Shown on screen is what I believe to be the engine that came with this tender. The tender has wiring, which apparently is supposed to be for a whistle sound. I'm not really sure how that would work, maybe through the controller, or maybe when it's running on the track. My ability to research ends here as we come to a mammoth engine. Honestly, I have no idea what it is. I may very well be wrong, but I believe this is a custom job, with its body being made of wood and its accessories being crudely constructed. Through limited research, I was able to find some discussion of wooden kit-built freight cars, but nothing relating to a Frankenstein engine like this. I guess it would be a 444? With the middle wheels having side rods? Looking online, this is the only 444 I could find. And one, that's a British engine. Two, I think that mine is electric. Three, that looks nothing like that. So I think that this engine is more of a make up your own engine type of thing, which is still pretty cool. Anyway, it still feels as special as the Lionel models. The construction is sturdy and it still has some nice details. The top of the engine has a pantograph, which can weakly bounce up and down, though I didn't put too much strain on it. Each side has a light bulb held down with a metal bracket, and also these Christmas lights. There is a large platform on one end, with railings, a cow catcher, and little chains above the wheels, which is actually a pretty premium feature. One of the platforms has fallen off, but it's still in good condition, and probably could be glued back on. The little bell on the top is able to rock back and forth, including the doors which can open and close. There are several windows which have yellow frames. There is various information on the side of the loco. A diamond-shaped logo with the Brink lines written, NKDIV and HW Gillen 60. These are mirrored on both sides. 
I don't think they have any real world connection, although the other custom models also have the Brink Lines logo. At the bottom of the engine, there are pencil markings of the planning stage, which I found really cool. One set of wheels was bent out of place, but I was able to put it back into place. Overall, this is the largest and most intriguing engine we found. Here is a custom hopper car, which is also constructed out of wood. It is painted black with similar detailing on the side. Here's the familiar The Brink Lines, and also the circular logo, Old Company's Lehigh. This is actually a real world thing. Here's a metal sign I found on eBay. On the underside, the hatches are screwed in with hinges, allowing the doors to open and close. I didn't want to break this feature, so I opened it sparingly. Still pretty cool though. There are two other custom freight cars, both flatbeds. The red one is missing one set of wheels, although they still have the painted on detailing of numbers. There are two other custom freight cars, but I'll save those for the end. Here's a three-part Lionel bridge, which has the Lionel logo engraved on each side. There's also this crossover bit, which will help construct more complex layouts. The last box had an assortment of miscellaneous things. In total, there were six switches, one of which I kept for myself. There were also tons of curved and straight tracks, which I stacked in this recycling bin. All the tracks need to be cleaned, as they are very rusty. This set of matches came in one of the boxes. The part holding the bottom of the matches can be used to clean the track, which I thought was really cool. Here's a crate that held some things. It must be getting on 60 years old. Lights similar to the ones on the abstract engine are in this box, which I had a bit of trouble opening. The largest Lionel model we found was this massive roundhouse. It's one section that is able to be paired with others, as seen in this picture. It's in a sorry state, as all the paint has been worn off, and is completely rusted. However, there are still details to be appreciated, and I think it looks splendid housing the 040. As you can see, there's white detailing at the top, opening and closing doors, nice windows. Overall, it's still a really nice find. At the bottom of the boxes, there were these small railway sleepers, and boy were there a lot of them. There are also some other miscellaneous metal pieces. Lastly, were these two controllers, one from American Flyer, a rival brand, and a race car controller, which had some severe rusting. It's crazy to see how fragile the cables were back in the day. If uh, some type of rodent came and chewed through this in one bite, you'd be up the creek. Before I sorted everything on the table, I made a small mock layout in the driveway. Here's a short video and some pictures of how it turned out. house, here are the things I decided to keep for my collection. This was the most complete switch, and I found the light that's fitted to it. A small string was attached to it, which was used to change the direction from a distance. What a clever solution. And the switch still works too, although the light up feature does not. Luckily, the small Lionel plaque is still intact. Here's a modified piece of track with the Lionel rails and wooden sleepers. It was the only one I found, so I decided to keep it. This box, similar to the light bulb one, contains small accessories, this time little flags. They are insanely cool, I may even use them for my TWR videos. Now we come to the last two custom freight cars. The box car was falling to pieces when I first pulled it out of the box, but my hope is to restore it to its former glory. The gondola car is in better condition, but I think it's due for a new coat of paint. 
they have the familiar The Brink Lines logo, and some other written details. Hand brakes are fitted, and there is a small ladder on the box car. On the bottom is this marking. To go off script for a moment, this really did make me feel good. To see this on the bottom of one of these cars, uh, that someone left this, it was designed in the 50s, and they just put this on here, you know, as a little marking to show when it was completed. But for me to see this now, and it still be intact, and that someone made this, uh, maybe not the original owner, but someone, and had enough care and passion to make this, it was really nice, and I'll definitely remember that for a long time. That's why I decided to take that. Here are some spare wheels, which I intend to use during my restoration of these models. These are very close to my heart now, and I really want to make them better and have them be how they were when they were originally made. This will be a later video, and I'm really excited to undertake such an interesting and what I hope will be an enjoyable project. I may have missed something here or there, but I think I've covered most of the bases. The Lionel models I didn't take are looking to be sold, although I'll be sure to enjoy them for as long as I can before that happens. I hope you enjoyed this showcase of my discoveries and had as much fun learning about pre-war Lionel models. If you have any questions about these models, their prices, anything about them, feel free to leave them in the comments. I can't say I'll be doing many more Lionel videos, but it's been good to divert from my normal video style. Thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.